Hi folks, Dragos here from the Senior Dev, and uh, today I wanted to share with you an article that was quite viral on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, let's go to this. So, the software engineering squeeze, becoming a software engineer was a life hack. The best profession on earth deserved a wake-up call. Let's let's go deeper. Uh, imagine you have a one full year, no obligations. You study every uh, waking minute. What profession can you do reasonably well after that and get paid the most? There's no question about it, a software engineer. In the last 10 to 15 years, it became uh, the new lawyer, Wall Street trader. I do partially agree with it. There, there were a lot of people getting into software engineering. Uh, I don't believe software engineering attracted people that wanted to make a lot of money unless they had, you know, an analytical brain. And the, the author tries to uh, mention this. It was the best job on the market. Every semi-analytical person took their shot for sure. But I believe, for example, uh, sales, uh, it's a lot more lucrative and it was a lot more lucrative uh, without having to go to a FANG interview, right? And the same in Europe. And if you are studying every waking hour, you could still go and become a doctor and a lawyer. If you, a lot of people don't like coding, a lot of people still choose to be conductors and any kind of engineers. Okay, so not everybody became a software engineer. And as software started to read the word, the demand continues to increase and engineers were the first hires in every startup and it was common to need hundreds of them if you really wanted to scale up. Yes and no. I uh, remember Instagram, I think uh, when it got acquired, uh, it had what, like 10 engineers? Nah, not 100%. Companies hired whoever they could get through the loop. Yes, they did that, but um, it's because they, they, they were obsessed with growth and because low interest rates allowed it. Okay, not because they really needed these people and they were hoarding talent. But if we are honest, our job just isn't that hard. I beg to disagree. Software engineering, it's a very tough job. You know, my education, it's aerospace engineering. I majored in um, rocket science, uh, rocket propulsion back in Madrid. And trust me, uh, when I switched to software engineering and I was coding every day, uh, I felt like, and I still feel that software engineering was a lot harder than aerospace itself. The reason being, a lot of engineering positions, most of them, I would say, not only software engineering, but after five, six years in the sector, uh, it becomes more moving, you know, the, the whole job becomes moving paperwork from one spot to another, specifically because, you know, in Europe, we don't have a SpaceX. I mean, maybe if you work for a company like SpaceX and Tesla, maybe you do some design, uh, but leaving those companies aside, a lot of engineering jobs are not that hard, okay? And I believe software is one of the hardest because you have to spend a lot of time into actually um, staying up to date. And the other thing is, you know, mechanical engineers, aerospace engineers, you need an aerospace degree to get hired by a company like Boeing or Airbus, right? There is a moat, there is a barrier of entry. Not in software. So you compete with everyone that's intelligent and everyone that is willing to code, right? Which is why I believe the software engineering profession, it's a lot more competitive. There are many advantages when you have such a profession. And I'll talk about that later. Uh, the result of all of it was a fat middle layer of mediocre engineers who are now getting squeezed. I, I beg to disagree. And uh, there's another study from uh, this uh, Stanford uh, department that's studying software engineering productivity. And they claim that one in 10 uh, software engineers, it's a ghost. They, they don't do much because they looked at, you know, commits and they looked at code and they code, they, you know, they're not doing any commits. What are they doing? They're probably, you know, wasting company money. Uh, and I, I, I don't, you know, it's hard for me to even agree with that. But in my experience, working in corporate, working in startups, in any kind of profession, from marketing to HR to sales, there's always one in 10 people who's not doing much. And the bigger the company, the more of these people you have. It's just when companies get big, if the culture and the management, it's not in place, okay, um, companies tend to, to, to have these people who are not doing much, they're very political, and they can be in any department, okay? Now, the other thing is, do we have a fat middle layer of mediocre engineers? And I doubt it. I think they are mediocre by today's market, but by yesterday's market, they were pretty capable. What's actually happening in reality, I think it's more of a demand and supply issue where interest rates went down, companies lay off a lot of people, they stop hiring, and people are not getting hired because there are not enough openings for everybody. Whether they're mediocre or not, doesn't really matter. Because they could be great if there is no job for them, well, nothing will happen. The media loves the Amazon stories like a software engineer lost his 150K, your job to AI, which is false. We have another video about this on the channel, AI is not even able to replace 10, 10 to 15% of what a developer does maximum. When we're talking about boilerplate uh, project, I think the productivity increase was about 30%. When we're talking about Greenfield, Greenfield projects, pardon. So we are far away from this, okay? This is the media. Uh, got rejected from 800 jobs. Yeah, I mean, you can get rejected from 2,000 jobs. You know, it depends on what, how are you applying? What are you exactly doing? And now DoorDash is and lives in a trailer. Unfortunately, especially in the US, but also in Europe, uh, this is the story of many people. I believe in this case, it's huge a skill issue. Uh, it is a skill issue. Now, this doesn't mean they are mediocre. It means, you know, there's, there is a gap between what the market demands and where they are at. Uh, still, it's not uh, just clickbait. Things are really tough. Mm, yeah, they are tough, but, you know, I, I mean, if you hang out, 
on, on Reddit and YouTube, those places are very biased, right? You find people that they go there to complain. People that are getting jobs, they don't make too many Reddit posts about it. They just go and get their money and they're happy. Uh, everyone feels the current times are t- the toughest in years. I agree, uh, but I've been, you know, I graduated uh, 2015, but when I started my degree, it was about 2008, 2009. Uh, those times were very tough. People thought the world is over and we will never get a job. Engineers got used to those cushy jobs and became the most spoiled profession out there. Uh, we work from nice coffee, we're home, solving testing problems and get paid uh, in the top 10% of our country to do it, which has, this is not bad. Okay, it's a tough job and it's okay to get paid. Whether it's top 10, top 20, top 30, that's up to the market to decide. But software engineering can be a very tough job. You have unclear requirements, you have people pushing you all the time, you have people maybe calling you sometimes on the weekend. If you work in a startup, it's living hell, right? And some software engineers become very spoiled. And I can agree, you know, back in the days, we were all a bit spoiled. But I can tell you, there are many people in society that are way more spoiled. Like, for example, if you live in any European country, government employees. I grew up in uh, in Spain, and then I moved to Germany. And I can tell you, these people, they work a mini extra, and they charge you for it. We are not anybody that works in the private sector. Outside of maybe a big corporate, where people, again, they can get away with doing little, we are not spoiled. Software engineers are not spoiled. We are working in an industry where, as we're seeing it right now, if you don't put the time, if you don't, you know, constantly improve your skills, you are being shown the door very fast. This is not true for people working in any kind of government job, for example. Okay, and yet many engineers complain, don't talk to me after working hours. Well, you shouldn't, right? I have a contract. Why should you talk to me after working hours? Right? I don't want to work on legacy code. I mean, who, who does, right? But I'm sure a lot of developers are a lot more flexible with these demands and the requirements aren't clear enough. I can't work like this. I think this is a very legit concern. I worked in many teams. Sometimes you get like some half-assed requirements uh, and uh, you are supposed to figure out the rest. And I don't believe in a professional environment. This is the way, uh, you know, business stakeholders and product management stakeholders and developers should work together. Uh, do an experiment. Try to uh, suggest a fresh graduate who can't find a job on LinkedIn or Reddit to work for minimal pay to get some experience. You will get roasted. I, I I don't think so. I mean, of course, if they live in you know New York City or San Francisco, they can't probably afford to uh, you know work for minimal pay because they'll have to live on the street. Okay, but many graduates, and I'll see most graduates are actually willing to to do that. Uh, in other careers, it's super common. Yeah, but you know we don't want that to be common. You know we want people to get paid at least something, right? If they are bringing value. Uh, you grind during your first years with minimal pay. You earn your way up, and you don't start with a hundred k and an easy job. Uh, I beg to disagree. I think different careers have different dynamics. You know, in careers like sales, you can hit the 100K very, very fast. If you're working in sales, any kind of sales, car sales, real estate sales. I've got friends who were working uh, up in Canada as truck drivers in the um, plumbing construction industry. They were clearing 120K easily. Okay, it's not a lot of money. I'm a bit annoyed with all this whining on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm not. I think a lot of the whining, it's legit. I think people are out of jobs. I think they have to pay mortgages and I think people are, are worried. And the squeeze go, goes both directions. It's not just one of the high this time, it's also one of the most exciting. Well, depends who you are. Right? I'm hugely optimistic about the software engineering career. All those companies started by Vibe coders around you. Many will succeed. Uh, many will succeed. I beg to disagree. And will need great engineers to scale up. Yeah, of course, maybe. Uh, some engineers understand this and they use the chance to scale up. Uh, to succeed, you probably need all the skills of an engineer, some of a PM, and even a bit of a design taste. I think this is a very dangerous uh, statement. A lot of people, because uh, they're being told, hey, I can do your job. You need to diversify your skill set. And then they, they try to learn everything. Uh, and this is a recipe for actually not being good at a lot of things and and burning out. Uh, I do agree it's not about shipping code anymore. It's never been about shipping code. It's about delivering value. And to deliver value, you need ideally uh, a good understanding of how software works, software industry, what is value. Right? You need to work close with your PM and there should be a PM. You shouldn't have to figure it out all alone. And you ideally need, ideally need uh, full stack skills. This is what we've been teaching developers front end or back end. It doesn't matter. Uh, JavaScript devs at the senior dev for the last five years. Okay, nothing new. But if you work as a code monkey, okay, getting detailed tickets and just shipping them, uh, you've done this to yourself. I, I Man, I, I don't want a finger point. Um, you know, code monkey, sure, there are some developers out there who are not doing much. I agree. But most people, and I like to believe that most developers, a lot of them, are kind of trying to do their best, especially in these times. Uh, you won't be needed pretty soon. I, I doubt it. I think if you're good at getting very complex tickets, detailed tickets, and, and shipping them, uh, you know, the company will uh, the company will not uh, throw you out unless the project gets cancelled, which you cannot really control. I believe there are too many mediocre engineers, but not, also not enough great ones. Uh, kind of that's a statement coming out of out of nothing maybe i work with a lot of engineers at all different levels some have mediocre skills yes and it's always 50 50 you know you can say you're mediocre or i can tell you whenever i see a you know quote mediocre engineer it's usually two things one maybe they weren't very proactive 
in improving their skills. And I don't blame them. Some people have kids, they get a job, they get comfortable. I've been there for years. I was very comfy. You know, I, I just didn't have the ambition. I know I thought, hey, things are okay. I would go back home. And, and there's many reasons to that. Procrastination, sometimes you don't have a clear path. You don't know, what, what should I learn? I know, you know, there's a thousand things on the internet. Instead of going there and getting anxious, I would rather play a video game. And I don't blame people for that. And the other thing is companies don't offer a lot of, you know, a lot of mentorship. There's no clear path for most developers. That's why we, we build a senior devs, Bogdan and I, right? So when you see someone uh, mediocre, I would say it's 50% dumb. Sure, you know, take responsibility. It's your responsibility, but it's also 50% the environment they're in. And if you want to level up, you have to change both. Uh, if you really want to be a software engineer uh, and you're out of a job, are you actually trying hard enough? I think it's tough. I think people that are, you know, living on the streets, like those extreme cases we see on Reddit, are, we're trying hard enough. I think they're not trying smart enough, but that's a different, for a different video. Uh, what are you doing aside from sending CVs and doing interviews? I mean, that's exactly what you should, you should be doing, but I would say you need to do this in the smartest way possible. Uh, it's never been easier to ship new ideas. Are you playing with the latest AI tools? Are you solving real problems around you? Or are you waiting for someone to hand you a backlog again? It's not shameful uh, to switch. Software engineering used to be for everyone. Now I believe it's for the ones who really want it, like any field. You can say this about any freaking field, okay? Final words, I don't think this post will be very popular, but I feel the need to share my honest thoughts. I'm not saying there are no great engineers without a job or that the people deserve uh, to be laid off. Yeah, but <laughs> it kind of feels like that. Maybe the tone. My point is that there is no place for coasting in software engineering anymore, uh, but there is and will be a lot of place for ambitious engineers, even fresh graduates. Again, I, I think there's some good ideas here. I mean, it's kind of a kick in the butt. I understand what Anton is trying to do. I just feel like given the sensitivity of the situation and given also the fact that software engineers as a collective are getting attacked. They are getting attacked from the tech CEOs who are, you know, they want to sell their AI tools and Microsoft CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, at Meta, uh, OpenAI, you know, they're all saying, hey, we don't need you. And I think it's very tough psychologically to be a software engineer these days because uh, we are creating a very toxic environment where, you know, you can basically scream at software engineers, you can tell them whatever, and nobody will hit back. You know, you can just say, oh, we will replace you. You're not needed. Uh, and I think it's very tough going to work, trying to do your best and just being told, hey, we are, you know, one year away, we are months away from making you obsolete. Number one, because that's not true. And we have a lot of material on this channel. Bogdan and I, I mean, you know, we, we live off this thing. Okay. So if there was any risk of developers not being here in five years, I would be the first one to be worried because we provide training and mentorship to software engineers, specifically to JavaScript engineers, right? Which is one of the languages that AI can speak the best, if, if we can say so, right? So number one, I believe software engineers have a bright future and I believe uh, nobody deserves uh, going to work or, or being in a profession and being constantly told, hey, you're not needed. Hey, you're too expensive. Hey, you're too entitled. Hey, you're too spoiled. What I would say is, you know, if I'm too spoiled, if I'm too entitled, if I'm asking for too much, then go hire someone else. And it is in these moments that you need to uh, trust yourself. You need to focus on your skills. Um, of course, focus on getting better, but but not out of shame, not out of fear, which is why I believe even the, if this, uh, it feels to me like this article is very well intended. Uh, I doubt, I bet Anton had only uh, positive uh, intentions. I think it comes at a point in time where uh, we really need the opposite. We need developers to answer. We need um, people to hold tech CEOs in line and they need to be a lot more careful with the kind of statements they make because there are real people behind these numbers. This is not just software engineers. We're going to replace you. Those are people paying their mortgage. Those are people, you know, paying their rent, making a living out of this. And that AI it's not what they claim to be. Uh, I think we deserve a bit more respect and some encouragement words. With that being said, folks, keep up the good work. We at the Senior Dev, Bogdan and I, are here to support you and help you. And if you want our personal mentorship and you want us to personally mentor you and help you define a clear path for you to get to senior and make it in this market, then click the link below and watch how we can help you. And if you're good with that, book a call with me. I would love to get to know you and see if this can for you as well. And I'll see you in the next one.